So I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm like really into moss. I'm gonna show you guys how I regrow live moss from dried sphagnum moss. In here behind me are some of the moss creations I've made. This one is my favorite at the moment. It's just like an orb. But yeah, the process is super simple. Originally, I was gonna show you guys the entire process and do it like from scratch so you guys can know what to expect, but it does take a while, like a couple of months, and this is a really requested video of mine, so I didn't want to keep you guys waiting, but I do have some progress pics from the last time I regrew dried moss, so I can just show you guys that, and it'll be more or less the same thing. The moss that I use is from the brand Best Grow. This is the only sphagnum moss brand that I use and that I've had experience with regrowing live moss, so I can't say that this works with other sphagnum moss brands. I would just recommend using this because this is what has worked for me also. This moss is super high quality and they also harvest their moss sustainably, which is really important. So like I said earlier, this is the moss that I use. Best Grow New Zealand Spag Moss. I'll put it down in the description for you guys. So you're going to want to use a clear container. It can be glass or plastic, anything that has clear sides, because the moss can also regrow on the sides of the container. You're just going to want to take your moss out of the bag and then put it into your container. While you're doing this, remove any of the small bits like sticks or leaves because that stuff can mold. So now you should have your moss in your container and then you're just going to want to water it. So I use regular tap water. I do this throughout the entire lifespan of my moss. I don't dechlorinate it. I don't do anything special to it. I don't fertilize it. I just use regular tap water. You're going to want to wet your moss and you can kind of just put in as much water as you want because you just want it to rehydrate and moisten it. And then after the moss has rehydrated, you are going to gently squeeze it to get out a lot of the excess water. You want it to be moist, but not wet wet. So this is what it should look like. You can tell the difference between the hydrated moss and the dried moss on the left because it's darker and warmer in color. Then I cover the top with saran wrap. You don't need to use saran wrap if you have a lid or something that works fine too. Just make sure it's not blocking the light. I also poke holes in the saran wrap to have a little bit of airflow going in to sort of avoid mold growth. The next thing you need to consider is the light the moss will receive. You don't want it to receive direct sunlight because that is just too strong and hot and harsh and your moss likely won't regrow in those conditions, but you do want it to still receive bright light, just not direct light. If your moss doesn't receive bright light, then it likely won't regrow and you will probably get mold growth. The other option that I think is actually better is to put it under a grow light because it can be exposed to very high light without the heat okay and that's pretty much it you just have to wait and make sure that your moss doesn't dry out um, and this honestly takes a couple of months I would say at least two months maybe three months to start seeing anything and here are some pictures of what it will start to look like once the moss starts to regrow they start to come out as these little bright green sprouts once the moss starts growing it'll quickly begin to spread out these two pictures were taken, I think, about a month apart. And then this picture I posted on my Instagram story a while ago. This is after two months. You can see here that the moss is starting to regrow. Pretty small right now, but this is how it is in the beginning stages. Here I have my pink princess that I grow outside. You can see that the moss started to come alive before it was just completely dried sphagnum moss. But over time, after keeping it consistently moist, it just starts coming back to life. As it establishes, it takes on this shape. A common problem that I see people run into is that they can't tell the difference between algae and the moss. The easiest way to tell is that algae will just be like a film and it doesn't really have like a physical structure, but the new growth on sphagnum moss will be like little sprouts sort of, and you'll be able to see that it has a structure. Also, algae will normally be like darker green, and then the new growth of the moss will be brighter. Probably only apply to some people. Do not use your fish tank water. Your aquarium most likely has algae in it in some form, so you don't want to introduce that algae into your sphagnum moss because it will likely take over the moss before it can start to regrow. So what's pretty nice about sphagnum moss is that it grows pretty fast. 
once it has established itself. And what's also really cool, I'm pretty sure this is applicable to most mosses, but you can take propagations and clippings from it and then place that on top of dried sphagnum moss and then it'll start growing and then you can continuously just keep propagating, which is what I've done and what I've been doing. And now I just have sphagnum moss just sitting here waiting to be used. Sphagnum moss is fairly resilient to drying out, so you can keep out in the open and not in an enclosed terrarium or an enclosed box or something, but it will grow a lot slower and it won't really reach the height this one is getting. The sphagnum moss that I've grown in the open air without a terrarium only grows like an inch or so up top. This one, I've just been growing it in the open air. The moss isn't getting super big, it's sort of staying fairly small. So yeah, those are my tips. I hope that's helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask.